Welcome back. You're still watching News Central. Now let's quickly head to West Africa where Nigeria's National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu says the country is still losing 400,000 barrels of crude oil daily to local and international thieves despite efforts to end the menace. Ribadu confirmed this when he led a presidential delegation to inspect oil and gas facilities at Owaza in Abia and Odogwa in Eche, local government area of River State on Saturday. According to him, the activities of oil thieves and pipeline vandals had impacted negatively on the nation's economy and were partly responsible for the rising cost of living in the country. Ribaudu said the operators of artisanal refineries collect a small quantity of crude oil when they break the pipelines while larger volumes of oil are spilled into the environment. And still talking oil production, Nigeria's federal government has reiterated its commitment to ending petroleum product importation as soon as possible, saying its efforts are being redoubled to restore the nation's local refining capacity. This was made known by the Minister of State for Oil Resources, or Petroleum Resources Oil, Senator Henneke Lopobri, during an inspection tour of the rehabilitation work in progress at the Port Hackett refining company at PHRC Limited plant in River State. The Minister of State said considering the level of progress recorded in the PHRC rehabilitation project, the plant will come back on stream by December this year. He also added that the objective is to ensure that in the next few years, Nigeria stops its importation of Joining us to look at this and other issues surrounding this particular story, we have uh, Bolahon Olojede. He is a development economic analyst. Uh, Bolahon Olojede, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good it, evening. It, it's almost three months since the federal government removed federal subsidy. You know, President Tinubu went on to give his speech and said subsidy is gone. Those three famous words. And before he went back to his seat, the petrol prices had spiked. Now, what is your assessment, overall assessment, of the petroleum industry since then? Okay, um, since that time, the, the petroleum industry has struggled um, to come into that dramatic policy change. Um, this was an industry, especially the downstream, it was the industry is used to a situation in which there is a sole importer of well, and it has been like that for uh, maybe about seven, eight years. And when this sole importer brings the fuel, the, the marketers will go and get from the importer. Uh, the price is fixed. Um, the foreign exchange is made available at certain concessionary rates. Uh, and, and that is how it has been for about seven, eight years. So the, the industry must have been a bit shocked um, at what has happened since that time. Uh, we've been told that, okay, it should encourage um, these marketers to be able to import by themselves. Uh, how much of that has happened in the last uh, two, three months? Uh, one cannot really say, but it doesn't appear as if uh, much has happened in that space. So um, not much has, has happened beyond the, the, the pressure on the price of the product. Because it is an imported product, which means it requires foreign exchange, um, as the foreign exchange moves, the price will also be under tremendous pressure to move along with that, move pri that, that uh, price changes uh, in, in, in the foreign exchange. Mm. So that's part of the problem that the industry has okay. faced over mm. the last uh, few months. All right. Uh, are you, are you, um, you know, optimistic? I mean... You know, government is saying it's committed to ending the importation of petroleum products soon. You heard from the news we just put out that the uh, Minister of State Oil is saying December, December, hey, we're going to have the Port Harcourt Refining Company. I think it's the smaller of the two refineries in Port Harcourt coming on stream. I need to check. But, um, I mean, how, how do you receive this news? Are you optimistic? Um, you know, it's been the same tale since 1999. So are you optimistic that finally... Um, it will be a thing of the past as far as importation of petrol is concerned. Well, for whatever reason, I um, I tend to maybe maybe because it helps my own personal sanity. I want to believe that it will happen this time around. 
I'm aware that the previous government, towards the last two years of that administration, did award those contracts. Of course, we shouted then that, you know, we've been seeing this award of contract for donkey years, and nothing seems to have happened. But they reassured us that this time around, they are serious about it, and something will happen. Well, the Portacon refinery is made up of two refineries, a 60 and a 150 uh, uh, barrels capacity refinery. Were meant to have been delivered, I believe, sometimes around June this year. But that did not happen. And when there were questions from the current administration about what exactly is going on with the refinery products, well, that was when we got to know that, oh, by December, it will start to produce. I just pray, I just wish that it will happen for us. Uh, because a lot of things have, that have been in that space, uh, the old truth have not been told to Nigerians. So I'm just hoping that this time around, we have the real information, and come December, the particular refineries may be both the 60,000 and the 150,000, that's 210,000 barrel capacity, will come on stream. That will be, that will be significant. That's, that's probably like 15 million liters uh, for possibility from, from that refinery. All right. Uh, you're talking about Teclimont SPA, who had that contract in 2021. Um, I think you were saying something about your sanity. Probably you don't want to hope too much. But let's see what happens. Um, uh, uh, what are some of the bottlenecks hindering local refinery capaci uh, capacity? You know, talking about, for instance, um, private sector coming on board. Um, I mean, I, I, I remember in River State, the former vice president, on behalf of the former president, saying they're ready to um, support local refining um, um, you know, small-scale refineries in the country, um, uh, modular refineries like we call them, but we haven't really seen much in that direction. So what are some of the bottlenecks? Why haven't we seen, uh, outside of government, um, local refining capacity, you know, get to where it needs to be? Well, actually, the, the nature of the market has been a very uh, big deterrent. The mathematics of refining uh, did not add up uh, because of the distortion in the market situation. So uh, a private investor, if he's unable to see through his money, will not invest in that, that space. So most of the people that we see uh, going into that place, most of them, of course, there are a few real refiners. I know Aradell is doing a bit in that space, and Aradell is actually in his next phase, trying to go into a bigger refining capacity, which is fantastic. So there are a couple of others in that space as well. But like I said, um, all those artisanal refiners and, you know, all those guys that are boiling crude in the creeks and the rest of it, while they may be able to contribute to diesel production, uh, PMS production, it's a little bit tough for them. So they don't go there. They would rather do diesel and another fraction, but not PMS. The, the, what should be an advantage of a reformed uh, downstream sector, including some of the things that the PIB has brought on the table, should be to encourage this private participation in refining. Uh, but it's, it's left to be seen. We're all looking at that space. And Gotse Refinery was supposed to have come upstream first quarter of this year. It became second quarter. It became end of July. It will appear that... Even with Dangote Refinery, a private institution, we are not also being told the whole truth. Um, is there a worry that we cannot handle it? I don't know. I, I would have thought that it is better to say, oh, these refineries, we are facing this challenge and this challenge. It will be June next year before we start producing. Or it will be so, so, so time. I think it is better for, for, for everybody's mindset than to keep on shifting it every quarter, this other month, that other month. It is, it is not a nice uh, position. All right. Thank you very much. Well, we move from um, turnaround maintenance to renovation. I don't know what will come next, but uh, we appreciate your time. It is good to, to have you and uh, to talk to you again. Bola uh, Olojene uh, is a development economic or economics analyst. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me.